Hey there YouTube, Air of Carthage here on Empire Total War Online. I am commanding <coughs> the mighty armies of Prussia. There go some of my Prussian Jaegers marching past. You can see that I'm playing on the Barfy Flatlands. And um, this was just a game that someone had hosted and I decided to join. The rules were no artillery, of course, because it's the Grassy Flatlands. And how could you possibly allow artillery on the Grassy Flatlands? But oh well, it was my opponent's game to host, and he can choose the rules as he see fits. I was just glad to um, have a game. Uh, and the reason I say that is because I was actually on Rome Total War um, just a little while ago, trying to get some good footage, because I haven't made a Rome video in a while. Um, but there was none. Uh, I think that horse just sneezed. In any case, yeah, I, I just didn't get any good footage. I uh, didn't have any good battles. Um, I mean, I had some battles I won, but... Uh, they were a little too easy, so it wouldn't have been much to show. So I decided to play Empire Total War, and this battle is not the uh, most amazing thing ever, but I wanted to get you a video up, because I haven't in days, and the main reason that is is because I just I don't have any footage to show you right now. I've been extremely busy, and I haven't had a lot of time to, uh, to get online and try and come across some footage. So that's what's going on. <clears throat> Let me introduce you to my Prussian army. I have two units of Light Dragoons, one on each flank. Here's what they look like. I think these guys have been nerfed to 70 range. Pretty cool looking units. Here is one of my favorite units on Empire Total War altogether, and it would be the second Hussars. These guys are awesome, and they're crazy fast. In fact, if you get those guys on a downhill charge, it's like uh, getting hit by a bulldozer. And I have six units of line infantry, one unit of lifeguard, which is right here. Very cool looking unit, very tough unit. There's my other second Hussars, and then I have six units of Prussian Jaegers. Now, I did bring a lot of skirmishers. Six units of long range is a lot. And the reason... Hey, check that out. They're all doing the knee scoot. That's kind of glitchy, but cool. I didn't know you could, like, ice skate on grass. It's pretty amazing. Anyway, I'm setting up a stake line here. Uh, this is hopefully to help protect my men from incoming fire. I know it used to. I don't know if they changed that in some of the last patches, but that's why I'm setting it up. I'm not really sure that it does in any good. And the reason I'm setting up a stake line in an attempt to protect myself is my opponent has uh, a lot of long range as well. He's also got six units. And um, when you play on the grassy flats and someone says no artillery, you can almost be guaranteed that they're going to bring a lot of long range and a lot of firepower. So uh, here's my opponent. Here's his six riflemen. He actually... Um, I get the first shots on him, but for some reason... I think my guys were too bunched up, and on Napoleon Total War it doesn't seem to make as much difference. But I think my guys were too bunched up, because even though I got the first shots, I caused very little damage. Maybe the stakes are blocking my shots, I don't know. But my guys are taking more damage, and I got the first shots, which that kind of annoyed me. That's happened to me several times recently on Total War games, so if you're a lot better at Total War games than me, which is a bunch of you out there, why don't you go ahead and explain to me how that happens sometimes, how you can get the first shot with the same number of skirmishers, and sometimes your opponent ends up winning that fight. What's the deal with that? I haven't figured it out. In any case, my opponent has six units of these Swedish Light Dragoons, and the Swedish Light Dragoons have 75 in each unit uh, because they have lesser stats than typical Light Dragoons, and so they come in larger unit size. I don't know if that's supposed to represent real life. Maybe Sweden had a lot of cab in real life. I'm not really sure, but I just know Sweden's cab units tend to come with more because their statistics are slightly less. So my opponent is going for a huge firepower knockout here. I move line infantry to my flanks. Because they've nerfed the range of Light Dragoons to 70, it's going to limit what my opponent can do without getting shot at. Um, and it's a good thing for me, because otherwise I'd be in trouble. Here my own Light Dragoons get some pretty good shots there. Uh, but he's got a whole lot more. And my um, infantry is just out of range. So I was trying to move them into range, but he goes ahead, takes his shots, and he's going to get out of there. So he's going to get the better of me on that exchange. Very little is going on in the skirmish fight up front. It's really just a time waster. Over here on this flank, um, my opponent moved right in front of these foot guards. Now, he is shooting them, which is smart, um, but he's also taking fire from them, which is going to be painful. He did kill 20 of them, though, which is bad for me. That's an expensive unit. It costs about 1,100 cash. But he, uh, he took his own fair share of damage there, you can see from the dead horses on the ground. Pretty much this goes on on both sides for a little while, uh, but I could realize that my opponent was going to be able to shoot me to death on the flanks with the Light Dragoon, so I knew I had to do something. I couldn't just sit here and take it, and I was also losing the skirmish fight, which again, so it was really weird because I have a stake line and I got the first shots. I know my positioning, I probably should have spread my men out a little bit more to help reduce the number of casualties I was taking, but still, 
if I remember right in Empire, it seemed like the first shot made a lot more difference on those long range units than it did in this particular battle. So I lined my men up slightly different this time. I made him come in and shoot at my infantry, and my infantry got off a lot of volleys and caused pretty significant damage to my opponent's light dragoons on that side. He's coming in, he just keeps this harassing movement up, and he's smart to do it because he's, he's winning by doing this on the flanks. He's definitely getting the better of me. Because he stayed right here just outside of the range of my infantry. I'm going to move up though, let you see where I am moving my troops. Try and get some shots off here. Which I do not. So see my opponent got away scot-free on that. But again, I uh, realized that he's beating me out by doing this, and so I'm kind of getting sick of it. And I'm not really sure why his cab aren't dying a little bit faster, because coming into a volley of line, it seems like they should be taking more damage than that, but they didn't, for whatever reason. I mean, I had more men in each one of these line units, and somehow uh, his fewer number of light dragoons caused more damage to me. It's quite odd, in my opinion. But, oh well, I have a means to get him. He is currently reloading. And while his men are reloading, I'm just going to charge him with my own depleted Light Dragoons. This will hold them in place. And then here comes my second Hussars. And my second Hussars will make short work of these guys in a melee, plus their charge is devastating. So there you can see him charge in and kill a large number of them. And one of the Swedish units is already uh, wavering. And I'm going to do a similar move on the opposite flank uh, in a moment. The skirmish fight, I just allow it to go on even though I'm losing, because it really doesn't matter. If I can kill his Light Dragoons, then I can balance out this battle, even though I've taken heavy losses from them. And you can see that my plan to kill his Light Dragoons indeed worked here. So my, my opponent's using an old, time-tested, grassy flatland strategy here, and he's doing pretty well at it. I've seen people use it even better. I've been beaten by it, I've beaten it. Um, I've just seen it a number of times. And there you can see one of the weaknesses of this build. My opponent had to put his general somewhere. Um, and because he didn't bring a general's bodyguard, it was in one of those Light Dragoon units, and now his general's dead. So his men are going to be concerned over the general having died recently. So my opponent did rout my Light Dragoons on this side. Uh, my second Hussars have taken a little bit of damage, but also dealt a little. I'm using my guards to fend these guys off, which is an expensive trade-off, as Light Dragoons are quite cheap, and my guards are extremely expensive. But again, I waited for my opponent to fire off his volley, and then I charged him with my light or er, uh, my second Hussars, and they're going to absolutely tear these guys up. So you can see how quickly they routed those light dragoons, and then I'm just going to chase the rest of them because they uh, they can't reload and fight at the same time. So I'm going to keep after them with my other other cavalry units, which have been freed up. I'm going to be making a rear charge in my opponent's center, where he doesn't appear to be paying attention right at the moment. So I'm going to take advantage of that and um, use these second Hussars for what they were, uh, what they're best at, I should say. Here they are charging into these light troops. You don't want to use second Hussars to charge heavy troops unless you just charge and immediately leave. Um, so here I charge these light troops where I inflict a large number of casualties, create a huge amount of disruption, and start killing a bunch of riflemen that my opponent badly needed um, to keep the balance of power in his favor. So he really didn't need to lose those uh, those light troops, and you can see that his attention, again, must be elsewhere because he's not turning his line infantry in. And speaking of line infantry, the, the line infantry fight's beginning. Remember that my flank is extremely uh, deteriorated from the fight with the light dragoons. It's part of the strategy, but my opponent split his troops in the middle, and so you can see that I'm going to make an outflanking maneuver on him right here. And this is going to help turn the tide back into my favor, even though I'm numerically outnumbered. So there you can see my men have turned up the flank, and I'm going to get to put down another volley on them. So we'll watch that, if my men are going to go ahead and fire. Maybe they're reloading. So anyway, these guys are outflanked now, that's why they're starting to waver. Swedish line infantry in this game is actually pretty cruddy. Um, they should probably be supported by guards, or have a general in the vicinity. And again, my opponent, um, his center was collapsed by my second Hussars, his center was being held by light troops, that was a critical mistake. You don't want to hold your center with light troops because a simple cavalry charge will dislodge them. And now his armies are split in two and outflanked. Uh, and they have cavalry in the rear, which I'm just going to let my Hussars fight to the death here. Typical Heir of Carthage commanding style. And check this out. Even though I don't have very many of them left, my second Hussars over here have managed to kill like all of these light dragoons in melee. If you can get the Swedish light dragoons in melee, then you're going to trash them because they're awful. Um, they're really best at just laying down fire at a distance. So there's my men continuing that fight. 
And check it out, even though my numbers were statistically very inferior, I'm actually uh, winning this line infantry fight. On the other side, you can see I've already routed my opponent's troops, and all that remains um, is a small number over here. Here's my foot guards taking care of business, or lifeguard, I should say. These guys are bad. So even all depleted like they are, they're, uh, they're standing their ground and fighting. It's pretty cool. Anyway, um, I think my opponent, he, he had a tough strategy here. And you can see that he depleted a large number of my troops. Um, I'm only winning this battle at great cost to myself. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put it in fast forward because the rest of this battle is pretty slow. It's me just mopping up mainly. Um, let me explain his strategy. His strategy was huge firepower here. And uh, I could have brought an equal number of Light Dragoons. Uh, but I did spend a little bit more money on my infantry line. And I just brought a little bit more well-balanced army in general. So the problem for my opponent was that because he didn't bring quite as well balanced of an army, uh, his cavalry was defeated uh, by a combined iron approach of my own. So he'd been, he should have been a little bit more careful with that, um, with those light dragoons. And I think he would have easily won this battle. So kudos to my opponent for for using this strategy. He used it pretty well. Um, it's actually not one of my favorite strategies. I don't like it, and I don't like the map. But you know, like I said, my my opponent hosted, and he can. He can set the rules and, and game type as he wished, so it was fun to play, played honorably, uh, nice opponent. Hope you enjoyed the battle. For some of those of you who are wondering, I will have some Rome Total War up soon, and um, for those of you Spore fans who keep bothering me to see <laughs> the next Spore video, here's the problem. I got Shogun 2 coming up, I'm really busy, it's hard for me to put up Total War battles as it is, and it's a Total War channel. And so I don't really have time for the spore stuff right now, and the space stage is like insanely long, and there's pretty much almost no end to it. So it would be hard for me to put up uh, any kind of videos without getting too into it, so be patient, give me time, eventually I'll show you something. Here's my unit statistics, now check this out. Uh, my Prussian Jaegers uh, sucked, they didn't get hardly any kills. Check out uh, my second Hussars, got their, um, they got a huge share of kills proud of them and then uh, most of the work was done by my line infantry of course you can see my lifeguard uh, massacred a lot of Swedish troops good game to my opponent like I said hope you enjoyed the strategy there it's it's an old classic strategy from um, Empire Total War in fact back in the day before they capped Ferguson rifles oh my gosh it was devastating it was hard to beat in any case uh, Eric Carthage signing off for now hope you enjoyed it <laughs>